Hi everybody, thanks very much for coming again. Uh, we are on session 29, no, 28, I can't believe it. Um, and in this session, we're gonna be looking mm -hmm. at Service Cloud AI and chatbots. I know Kat, you're really excited about this one, right? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, Super excited. Yeah, so I'm gonna be learning a little bit with you. It looks like I've done one of these modules before, but it was quite a long time and I probably rushed through it. So I'm quite keen to give this another go. Um, with you and we're going to go through um, we're going to build an Einstein bot for customer service and mm. we're see how far True. we go through that um, <clears throat> because then there is a project to do but I've actually put that down as homework for you um, so hopefully this will help us and, and um, we'll we'll see how far we get through mm. right <coughs> okay uh, I'm going to share my screen. My entire screen. Um, this one. Okay, wonderful. So there is a, a really good trail on tra on Trailhead, which is about making service cloud smarter. So that that's the source of. Um, the activities that I'm looking to do with, with you. Um, the first one is about Einstein bots basics. The project here I'm setting for homework for you. And as a stretch, if you want to, you can go ahead and build uh, an iOS app if you really feel so inclined. Um, there is an additional piece of homework I've put in as well, which is Einstein case classification. Um, I've not done that one yet either. So um, maybe, you know, keep in touch and let me know how you get on with it. <clears throat> Okay, are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? I'm gonna move your chat over here. Cool, cool. Okay, who's ready to make their service cloud smarter? Let's do this. So, learn about Einstein bots. You can all see my screen. Okay, I assume so. Um, <clears throat> So in this unit, we're going to be looking at what a chatbot is. We're going to look at the key benefits of chatbots, and we're going to begin a planning process to create the bots. Um, and this, I found this module really useful because it explains what a bot is and what a bot isn't, and what, what kind of things you should use a, a bot for and which ones you shouldn't. Um, so we're still in Ursa Major Solar. We're in that lovely solar panels um, business and they've now deployed service cloud but they're getting higher csat scores so customer service satisfaction scores and they're they're actually growing their business as a result um so obviously sales is booming supports really really good and easier and faster um but in order to keep going they've got to they've got to keep pl planning in order to be several steps ahead of the competition so to do that uh, we want to learn the latest technologies da 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 so we've been Hearing a lot about chatbots out there, um, there's lots of discussion about it in tech magazines and in the press, etc. And um, it, this module actually really helped me understand exactly what it is. So we've been wondering about chatbots, and we found that it is an application that simulates human conversation. It will do this either via text message or aloud. There are several different um, websites out there where the, you get the little bot in the bottom right hand corner, it pops up and says, hello, how can I help you? And you answer a couple of basic questions and it might shoot back a link at you that you can then use to complete what uh, to um, to complete your task. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, if you've got um, if you've got a program effectively talking to a, a customer, it gets really um, important because you've got tone to consider, you've got the frequency of response to consider, and all of these things can influence a customer relationship as well. Um, I'm sure many of you have got Amazon Echo Dots. How many of you actually really like them? Um, I'm always swearing at mine, I'll be honest, because she's always getting it wrong. Um, if I ask a question, it um, it does actually often miss here and doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. So I get frustrated with it. Um, it doesn't deter me from Amazon as a brand, but it actually gives me mixed mixed feelings when I think about the um, Alexa stuff, because on one hand, I find Alexa really useful for listening to music. So I can just tell them to script, skip the track or turn the, mute, the volume up and down, which is great if I'm in bed and I don't want to move. But um, the, the rest of the time for all the use cases that Alexa is advertised for, the searching and the recipes and what's on TV and all that kind of stuff. Half time, it doesn't even get it right. 
Um, so that has influenced my relationship with Alexa as a brand. Um, when people say oh, we've got Alexas all over the house, I'm like, oh yeah, I know, but it's 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 actually changed that relationship that I have with it. Um, so, which is why it's really fundamental to think about what's your priority for automating um, your first re your first customer responses, etc. Um, so, what is the purpose of a chatbot to deflect? As I mentioned before, if you have a customer, if you have a contact center, um, you know the more people you've got working there on um, on the most on really really common queries, there that's time that could be spent supporting customers that have more complex queries that influence your product and your relationships and your contracts. So that's why we. Um, <coughs> Um, so that is why we make sure that when when we um, educate all of our um, all of our agents and so on, um, we we ensure that um, I'm sorry, my brain just went completely blank, blank and I'm not going to try and black this one. Anyway, chatbots are there to deflect because it saves you money, um, but also it's there to make sure that all of your customers can get their on that can get answers quickly to questions that don't rely requiring a lot of effort to answer anyway um so there's a little video so let's have a look um as maria finds examples of chatbots online she sees how they're simply an additional channel for a company to engage with customers and along with now classic channels of phone email text social media these are yet another option to connect with customers and build relationships if you get it right so let's play the video so she's basic yeah, so this is a customer that's decided to type in and has got hold of the bot and has said, right, I want to check my order status. What's your order number? Off it goes, checks. Can I help you with anything else? Okay, so these very fast questions, they're a lot more engaging than looking at an article. You actually feel like you've spoken to someone and it's tapping into that psyche. The chatbots feel like a different type of channel. Um, they're smarter than email, um, but um, they're in this inst in this um, instance, in this trailhead badge, when Maria thinks about her personal assistant at home, she's amazed because she can have the voice enabled conversation she has with it. Oh, she's talking about Alexa. Oh. So she can ask about the weather, how much it costs to buy her cat's favorite brand of catnip. And the answers always sound so intelligent, so human. I don't know if she's got the magic version, but anyway. But Maria has also come across some not so smart chatbots. When typing questions, the answers she receives had nothing to do with her questions. For example, how much is a plane ticket to Denver? A Denver omelette has ham, cheese, peppers, and onions. Yes, this happens to me a lot. Um, anyway, let's talk about what chatbots are and chat what chatbots aren't. Chatbots are not equal to artificial intelligence, okay? Um, not all bots are actually hooked up to um, artificial intelligence technology. They're not all smart. In fact, a lot of the most human-like responses from chatbots are connected to a different type of technology, which is called natural language processing, and it tries to imitate human uh, conversation. And it learns as it's being used. Um, so that's the whole purpose of it. So as Maria looks into AI and Salesforce, she sees that natural language understanding is the technology that makes Salesforce Einstein smart, not natural language processing. So what, what makes NLU different is it's the training. Einstein, te the technology actually trains the chatbots to create a learning model, which actually helps the chatbots then go and understand customer interactions. And that's what leads to one of the major benefits of chatbots and having it uh, understand certain levels of nuance and give better customer service as a result. Um, these all save people time and money because the same straightforward questions can be answered over again. And there are, we can um, you know, create that, that, that uh, illusion, that illusion, <laughs> that um, environment of where customers can come along and get and, and trust that they will get the answers to their questions um, as they as they ask them, and if they don't get a swift response, that's the the main, the other main impact of this stuff is that if your customers are stuck and they don't get an answer quickly, they'll just go elsewhere. So, <laughs> cat girl NLP is a subset of AI. Okay, happy to 
Kat, if you want to take us through all of that, I'm, I'm learning this with you uh, from scratch. So um, I'm not exactly an NLP master, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so anyway, let's just go through the benefits. Why do we? Why why would a business uh, consider using um, chatbots? Well, obviously, everybody's out on their phone. They've all got phones. Um, we've all meant there. Yeah, why can't I talk tonight? Um, we've all got phones, and we all want to be connected. And we all, if we need an answer to something, we want to ask it and get the answer as quick as we can. Um, many of us are more patient than I am, but you know that that's that's certainly how I am. <laughs> Um, so, and that's one of the benefits of chatbots is that everything's quick. So you get your quick case deflection um, because you, your specific questions can be answered, make it answered very quickly and make customers happier. So there'll be fewer cases for support. The community will know this stuff and answer and help itself as well. Uh, there's reduced waiting times. Um, I don't know about you, I hate waiting in a queue for a call center, even for the doctors, I get really fed up with it. Um, but the worst ones I don't, the worst ones I think are the ones where it doesn't even tell you where you are in the queue. They just, you just kind of sit there for an hour waiting. Um, so a chatbot is a way of reducing those wait times and just having, um, you know, not having to wait for an email phone call or response from a different, a different channel. Um, obviously, it saves, saves a lot of time because um, easy cases are deflected, so they can actually devote more time to some more hard, some more difficult issues that can actually help them and help the product to grow. Um, efficient redirects for customer inquiries. So bots can instantly welcome customers with a branded greeting. So it's all part of that um, engagement um, and image that you want your company to have. Um, and direct them to resources that they need fast. So you can actually have a pop up and say, here's an article that you might need. Um, then you, and then the other benefit of this is you get the intelligent responses through NLU. So when they're connected to NLU, natural language understanding, they can learn how to respond to customers appropriately and then uh, let the agents do some of the more complex stuff, okay? Um, I have yet to see um, someone implementing this, but I have. I've got plenty of friends who have it, who have implemented um, chatbots to some degree. Um, it's very cool when you do get them set up, for sure. Um, right. So when we're implementing things like Einstein bots, this is where we have to think about our, the different layers of customer service that we are. Um, operationalizing in our contact center. So Maria knows that adding multiple channels is the second stage of this setup process because what we've just done is, is set up case management. So that's the core of it in there. But also there, it's, there are like four high level stages for setting up Salesforce. So you start with your case management, move into your channels, then build your knowledge on top of that. And then you can start uh, fronting it off with AI and, but, and bots, not bots. Um, so obviously, having we we spent some time setting up case management features, um, <laughs> and um, so we understand if you know why it's best not to set up AI and bots first. How is it going to learn for a start? Uh, if a chatbot can't help a customer, then how would customers be you know get help from us through other channels, etc.? So we do it last, um, and. We know we can set it up quite well. It's just all of the planning that goes into it is really fundamental. Um, so let's look at some of the things that, some of the reasons that we might plan. Hang on. From what Maria's read, almost anyone with, yes, okay. So we're gonna learn some details about how they operate. So, as, so she meets with the service team and some of the questions that Maria or a consultant in this role as well, could look at is things like what are the most routine issues that rather than I wouldn't position it as what can a chatbot resolve for you I would actually position it as tell me some really routine issues and tell me how long you think it's taking on average um, in a year um, how much how much time is being taken up by answering these most common queries and that will help you to kind of understand and prioritize because then you can attach a monetary value to it. You can say, if I'm spending 200 hours answering questions of this type across all these agents and being able to, to, um, to look at their salaries for, divided by like number of hours, et cetera, then you can actually really put a monetary value on, um, you can put a monetary value on um, the amount of time that you're saving through implementing things like chatbots. 
So routine issues, so you could be doing password reset requests, uh, checking the status of an order, looking up store locations and hours. Um, there's also the conversation about knowledge, which we implemented last week, which is the, um, does the team have a set of knowledge-based articles that a bot could use to answer common questions? Well, that's the next stage, isn't it? So you kind of prioritize your top five questions, write very quick scripts for those, get those live, that will deflect the first lot. Then the next, the next thing you can do is actually start bringing in knowledge articles as well and saying, right, okay, uh, this bot doesn't know the answer to this, but here's an article that might help you, for example. And then if that still hasn't helped you, then you can actually eventually maybe get through to someone through Live Agent. Um, so it's just a way of making sure that only the, the really complicated and serious cases get through um, to a human being um, in order to save that time and money. So um, how many chatbots should we create? Well, just do one, but you can create up to 10. As with Salesforce, anything in Salesforce, there's limits for everything. So you can do up to 10 bots that are active at any one time. Should we name the bot to reflect our brand and personality? Um, yes, how about Solar Sammy? Oh, God. We don't want to take ourselves too seriously. Well, yeah, that's up to you. But you do have to consider the tone. And, um, you know, often your, your tone of voice is um, a huge part of your brand. So, um, for example, Salesforce, they actually have a whole guide which is called the Salesforce Tone of Voice. And anyone who writes for Salesforce, including on their blogs, etc., uh, follows that, that that tone of voice um, and the same for trailhead so it's friendly uh, without without being too casual and it's it's conversational and it's knowledgeable so that's the tone that they're aiming for um, okay so to set customer expectations that the bot isn't human who should design and write the welcome greeting well we say you since you like to do that kind of stuff and you're good at it ha <laughs> um, should the chat should the bot chat window include a persistent list of menu options? So the advice is yes, we want the menu options to include a quick way for customers to get to the main bot functions at any point in the chat experience. Um, the menu should also have the option to transfer to a human agent as well. That just gives people that, um, that additional route um, and is better customer service. Uh, who should compile a list of the ways customers ask for help with the issues we've scoped for our bot? So agents can help because uh, they're familiar with the customer's issues. Um, so you want to have someone who is out there on the ground dealing with the queries day in, day out, because they're going to be able to give you a much stronger example. Um, but you could also consider doing a survey if you've got lots of agents involved. You know, you could pick a handful of trusted ones, but it's not. Is it really a representative sample? I'll leave that up to you. Um, a survey is definitely something you could consider doing. Right. So there is a quiz to do. I'm going to open up my incognito window again. It's on the other page. And let's have a go at the quiz. So for 100 points, question number one. What is a chatbot? Is it A, a database that tracks words in and out? B, a robot that simulates people talking? C, an application that simulates human conversation? D, software that records human conversations and plays them back? Or E, an application that creates dialogue for machines? I think Kat's going to be all over this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, question number two, which of the following are benefits of chatbots? A, case deflection, shorter wait times and intelligent responses with NLU. B, save time for customers, the display of useful content and more efficient distribution processes. C, intelligent responses, quickly created cases and use of stored data. D, reduced wait times, efficient service issue queries, queries, queues, 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 and use of NL, NUL. Or E, case deflection, intelligent agents, and scripted conversations. Wow, that was a long one. Okay, everyone passed that bit? Yay! Live feed. Thank you, Jeremy. 
That's brilliant. Well done. Okay. So actually that module was, um, did we do this last one? Okay. Just going to double check. So plan your bot content. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. So the next bit is about how you define and plan what you're going to do with the, with, with the words that come out of the chatbot, really. Um, so obviously the CEO of Ursa Major Solo is really curious to learn more about what the admin has discovered about chatbots. Um, she mentions that bots are a smart customer channel that requires a lot of content. Um, it's easy to deploy but it's but like knowledge it's something that needs planning out as a process in its own right um planning what the bot does and doesn't do and says what doesn't say can prevent bad customer experiences and re de-risk the um sorry reduce the amount of risk to your brand perception um, so to understand the types of bot experiences to craft content for, Maria reviews this Einstein bot terminology with the service team. So first is dialogue. Dialogues are conversation snippets that control what a bot can do. So each dialogue includes an intent, a dialogue intent, which is optionally available for NLU training to, dis to understand different types of customer responses. During a conversation with a customer, a bot moves between several different dialogues. Each dialogue handles a portion of the conversation. For example, welcome, main menu, order status, location and hours, and transfer to agent are individual dialogues that a customer might experience as part of a single conversation with a bot. Okay, right. Um, a dialogue for chat with an agent, for example, might look like this. Customer, transfer me to an agent or any variations on this phrase. Bot, no problem, hang on, I'll connect you with an agent. So the intent is the customer's reasons. Why, why are they actually wanting to interact with your bot? Like, do they want to buy a solar panel? Do they want to return it? Do they want to get the store hours, et cetera? And they tend to start, because they're because those intents are actions, like I want to return or I want to buy, I want to find, I want to look up, I want to cancel. Um, you can add dialogue intents to your dialogues, then train the bot to create a model that it can use to understand some of those intents. So for example, I need, um, I need a refund. You can have a refund dialogue um, intent. So if your customers um, interact with your bot by typing a message in the chat window, you can use intents to help your bot understand what they want. Um, However, if you're only using menus and buttons, so for example, that you're just going, you know, click this, then click that, then click that, then you don't need intents. It's only if the if you want the customer if you want the customer to actually chat with the bot. Um, so customer input that might trigger an intent could be, where's my order? And then and then you've got you you th then you start looking at entities and entities are a type of data that you want to collect from a customer so things like uh, so salesforce has got text date time date money number person location organization percent boolean object etc apparently you can create some custom entities so you could create an entity for order number or email address and you use that typically for id and v situations identity and verification you have a phone up the bank and they say can can you just Pardon me, I'm just going to take you through security. Can you give me your first line of your address, and postcode, and your date of birth? Um, so these are the kinds. So these, those would be entities that you can enable in the um, in in the chatbot itself. I find this really interesting because it helps me to draw pictures in my head of what it's doing there. Because even if it's if it's a Salesforce object, then you actually tell it like where to go and find the information, surface the information. It's very smart. Okay. Mm. Then we have variables. Variables are containers. They, they are containers in every sense. Um, and this variable will contain a piece of information that you collected from a customer in the bot. So you have to basically associate it with an entity. So for example, entity is email address. You're going to need a variable for email address variable uh, because it can change depending on which depending on who the conversation's with. Um, so since they're containers of information, you can use them within dialogue actions as both inputs and outputs and insert them as text in messages. Right, okay. 
So when we go and plan all our content, um, once we understand the terms, entities, variables, and dialogue intent <laughs> and dialogue, um, it helps us to actually plan what kind of content we need to do. So it's got to be clear and it you've got to know what it should say because if you don't know what, not knowing what what, what you, you want your bot to say is worse or as bad as saying the wrong thing. Um, you know, so each of those can really upset your customers. Um, and it, it's it's visible as well. I mean, as a customer who's digitally aware in many cases, I can tell when a, when a customer is working with a minimum, minimum viable product version of whatever tool they're using. You can just tell because it's just it's not enriched but the thing with something like this is it takes time like for bots to become really effective it takes time because you've got to keep adding data so that it can learn and you've got to keep training it use by using it um so maria explains to sita and the service team that from everything she's learned the best people to research or suggest bot content are the support agents who work with customers every day so agents are on the front line they know your customers they know their questions they know their complaints and they they know what their common issues are. However, they might not necessarily be the right people to craft the content itself because that, that content has to represent your brand and be helpful. Um, so you need actual copywriters. Um, they know the importance of words, they know how to use words um, and to set a brand and a tone. Um, and they know how to create a customer experience with words. Um, so anyway, so the topics and questions that Maria has been looking at. So the topic, first of all, is we have to actually define the context of the bot. So questions could be, what's your company name and industry? And what are your most common customer service scenarios? So you might be looking at order status, appointment scheduling, inquiries about prices, etc. Store hours and locations. They're all things you don't want your people picking up the phone to answer questions for. Um, then you've got to think about giving it some personality. So you give it a name, um, give it, um, take one to three adjectives to describe how you want that tone to be. So if you want it to be a bit cheeky, if you want it to be friendly, if you want it to be uh, sarcastic, you know, you can, you can start thinking about those things. Um, then think about how is it similar to or different from your company's brand? So, um, you know, if your, if your brand is, if your company is, company brand is, is kind of going for trustworthy and honest then you're going to want your bot to be trustworthy open and honest and you're going to want to use words and language that that conveys that that those values mm. um how does your bot convey this personality in a greeting for example hello 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 hey hey sup how can i help you um you know that you th think about how you want them to say hello and greet people does is does that need to be different for a new customer versus a customer that's returning um could you make it very you know a lot smarter by saying okay um it's been a while since we've seen you or sorry to sorry that you're having another problem after logging a case last week etc you know you can really make it quite helpful um, how does it convey this personality in a farewell? How does it respond to gratitude with personality? How does it apologize? When should your bot change personality? So for example, if you could tell it if the, if the bot makes more than two apologies, which is your dialogue intent, um, then you can have it redirect directly to a, a support agent, for example. Um, because you know, if they're having to apologize twice, um, there's obviously a, a fairly irate customer on the end of the phone and they need a bit of special attention. So design the conversation. Can you identify the bot as not human in a greeting? Well, you probably have to do that legally anyway. Um, but you can, but some of the things to think about is, you know, hello, I'm a bot, I'm here to help, but a real human can help you too, et cetera. You know, because some people still feel really uneasy about this kind of stuff. Um, are there any menu options to set expectations? Well, yes, we want to. We want the option to transfer to an agent at any time, and we want them to close the conversation as well to show in a menu that persists, which means it's just always there. It's always there on the page for them to use. So, content considerations. So, we've been thinking about these content considerations in order to um, avoid bad customer experiences with bots. So, coming up with openings, like opening a chat with a question, like "How can I help you?" Closings, thank you, can end a chat. One thing I would say to think about is 
how do you avoid because i mean i'm I, I use live chat quite a lot i use chat bots quite a lot one of my biggest frustrations is when i go through identity and verification so it asks me for my email address it asks me for my name it asks me for my customer order number so i go upstairs tear my up tear my office apart to find this order number pop it into the uh the chat and then and then i get through to somebody and they say hi what's your name and what's your order number so anyway, just think little things like that can have a huge impact on, on how customers feel about your brand. Mm. Um, so setting your closing as well, like, you know, uh, I'm going to leave the chat now, speak to you later. You can always come back if you need to, et cetera. To response delays. So you can actually, um, you could actually say, you can set, think about how, your how long you want your pauses in text chats to be so it says the average human pause time in text chats is approximately two to four seconds uh, depending on what they what text message they're responding to i guess <laughs> but anyway and then think about you know actually using emojis and emoticons I, i've had many conversations with customers who have kind of scoffed and gone oh you know emojis why do we need emojis all this kind of stuff emoji when look how you know and they kind of make jokes about um being of a different generation etc but actually a picture does say a thousand words and being able to use emojis to show warmth enthusiasm empathy etc is far more engaging because if you think about the audience who are going to actively use a live chat they they will have had some exposure to that world anyway Pardon me. Then we have text styles. So things like your fonts. Um, you can use uh, machine fonts. Um, think about how you want your um, your writing to appear and your punctuation and spelling. Use of apostrophes. Um, you know, think about the use of capitals, um, and and be able to. You, you really do have to kind of look it deeply into into language uh, when you set these up um, properly. So if you're looking for any content, sample content, any apps to extend your bot, then obviously you can go on the App Exchange. Some people have been building these, um, which is fantastic. So you can install those into your own orgs as well. So should we do another quiz? Um, let's let's go to plan your bot content. Okay, and you'll notice there's some extra resources here as well. There's a help article, and then there's a writing style given by Trailhead, which I've, um, you know, I really do think is really good. You get to know the voice and tone, learn the guidelines, dial up the fun. And actually, there are lots and lots of people who, who write um, for Salesforce. I've written for Salesforce's blog myself, so it's and it's it's great that 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 guidance is there and um, and accessible to everybody. Right, so our quiz questions. Question number one, which terms are important to know before you build your bot? Um, A, intense dialogues, integers and entities. B, dialogues, enters, intents and variables. C, variables, entities, intents and didgeridoos. D, entities, intents, variants and dialogues. Oh, e, variables, dialogues, dialogue, intents and entities. Definitely need didgeridoos, for sure. Okay, question number two. When planning your bot content, which topics are important to focus on in your planning questions? Is it A, context, personality, and conversation design? B, design, names, and greetings? C, industry, adjectives, and attitude? D, personality, farewells, and menu options? E, location, conversation, and voice and tone. Okie dokie. Shall we go back and hopefully you've all passed that one. <laughs> Sorry, I've already done it, so I can't join you on this one. Okay. 
So learn the prerequisites and enable Einstein bots. Now this is where we get to do some stuff in Salesforce. So you should be all right to do it in your own orgs. Let me just double check. Yeah, no, you're good. So I'm gonna um, move this over here and I'm gonna go into my um, org. So hands on orgs. Okay, I want to uh, learn Salesforce with Gemma. Launch. Okie dokie, so what do we need to do? Hopefully you're all in trailhead. Um, when you are working with customers, if they're interested in chatbots, then what they need to know is that you need to have a service card license and a chat license. Um, available in your org so it, it, there is an extra cost associated with it if you don't have that already okay so what do we do first we enable lightning experience well we've got that already enabled then we go into setup oh what hang on okay so we're going to go into into service setup and we're looking for a chat guided setup flow so we're going to go and find that recommended setup so view all chat with customers okay and start so the first thing that it does oh provide an embedded chat button so run the chat guided setup flow okay it doesn't say chat with customers it just says the chat guided setup chat okay so it's this one okay um then we need to go to uh, you can find recommended setup flows content based tips okay so provide an embedded chat button for your customers on your community or site so we then we would need to create a chat queue Hold on one second. Okay, create an embedded. Oh, okay, this isn't actually stuff we have to do on Trailhead. This is just how it gets done to enable the chats. So after she's completed each step in the bot requirements, she can enable bots in setup. So let me just check, is this the one where we've got chat? Um, settings excuse me just a moment right so chat is on which is good okay so have we got a deployment yes we have we've got the chat set up flow okay right okay sorry about that so do you remember when we did the visual force page and in the visual force page they had um you had the option to chat with an agent um you might remember this one we did this a little while ago. So this is click the button to start a chat and you go in the bottom right hand corner and it and you it enables you to to chat and put the subject in, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So that's a good thing. We can use this all. Thank God for that. Okay. So when we're ready to enable Einstein bots, what we need to do is go into our setup and we need to enter Einstein bots. So apologies if you're feeling a bit lost. I got lost myself. Um, um, I was just checking to make sure that chat is enabled properly and um, which is what we did in a previous um, Lesson so that this doesn't die on its backside when I try and run it with you <laughs> through when we set up the uh, the the bots themselves So I'm going to click Einstein bots uh, In the settings area, we need to click the toggle on next to Einstein bots. You see it's off at the moment so we click it on I'm authorized by my company. Of course you are because it's your it's your trailhead org and we enable it um, to provide customers with a persistent menu of options for interacting with the bot you can click the drop down drop down to edit the settings so we click in the bottom right hand corner here where it says settings in the middle you've got the bot options menus currently disabled we just edit that 
and we click Enable Einstein Bots Options menu. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that when you create and edit your chatbot dialogues, you can choose to add them to the bot options menu. So for example, when they op first op when your customers first open up the window, you can have three dots next to the text um, box where it can say, you know, here are a few kind of canned um, common complaints. So they, so they don't have to type it in, they can just pop it, they can just select it from a list. Okay, so we're going to click new and create a new bot. I'm really excited. I've never done this before. So, actually, yes, I have. I've done this badge. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome to the Einstein Bot Builder. Give it a name that reflects your company's brand, voice, and tone. So we're going to click uh, next. And we're going to give it a name. So please give it a name that works best for you. I'm going to call mine Cersei Lannister. Who is ambitious, dangerous, and fiercely protective of her children. Okay. The next thing that you do is you get to give it a greeting message. So. Um, how would you like Cersei to greet your customers? You're late. We recommend that you identify your Einstein bot by name and make clear it's not a human. You're late. The real Cersei will have you executed. Okay, then you come up with your menu. So what are the three most common issues or questions that you want your bot to handle? So things like you could use returns. Um, yeah, uh, you could use um, returns, uh, order status, um, payment, billing, we call it billing. Okay. Create. So now it's building a bot. Hooray, you just built a bot named Cersei Lannister. So your bot has a greeting and a menu. Next, use the Einstein Bot Builder to set up dialogues, variables, and entities. These are the elements that manage the interaction between your customers and the bot. This is going to be too much fun. I know it. Right. So it's redirecting to the bot builder. So from Whenever someone talks to this, it's going to say you're late. The real Cersei will have you executed. Um, what we then have to do is to add a chat channel. So in the builder menu, we click overview, which is where? Uh, overview. And we click add to add a new channel. And we click chat. But look, there's loads of different ones here. You can use WhatsApp as well. You can use text, you can use Apple Business Chat. For the deployment, you want to include the chat deployment that you may have created before. Hopefully you did. Yep, chat agents. And then you say whether you uh, enable the chat button only when at least one agent is available. So that's probably a safe bet, I would say, in real life, is to make sure that, you know, because if somebody gets fed up with a chat bot and there's no one around to deal with it, um, that's yet another thing. So. Let's save that. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So what do we do next? We've got another quiz um, to do. How are we doing? We're an hour in. I think we could make a start on the um, project maybe. Okay, what licenses do you need to set up bots? A, for service cloud and chatbots. B, snap-ins and chatbots users. C, chatter and chatbots. D, service cloud and chat. E, live agent and chatter user. Okay, wonderful. Question number two. What is the first feature to enable as a prerequisite and uh, to setting up bots. 
A, lightning experience, B, snap-ins, chat buttons, C, sites or communities, D, live agent, or E, Salesforce knowledge. The prerequisite. Just making sure you could see everything. You all got confetti. Marvellous. So I think the answers for that one are service cloud and chat and um, live agent. Hooray. Okay. Let's go and have a look at the next things I've got in this, in this module. And um, guys, if you want to come off mute, uh, let's talk about what, um, how you would like to use the second hour. If that's all right with you? Sure. Uh, Chatbots. Live feedback, Jeremy has lost. Have we lost? Oh. Devastated. Oh, there he is. He's back. <laughs> Welcome back, Jezza. <laughs> my live chat, my chat functionality is all messed up, so I'm a little lost. I was trying to keep up. Oh, okay, sorry. Not um that's my issue. Okay, no problem. Um so yeah, so obviously at this stage we don't have anything useful in this bot, it's just been set up, so it's just Cersei. Um okay, so let's have a look. We were doing oh, I got that there. I was looking at the wrong thing. I apologize. Make service cloud smart again. Okay. <laughs> So we've done Einstein uh, bots basics. Um, what would we like to do with the second half? Do you want to do a project now or do you want to, to do Einstein case classification? Project. Vote one project. Okay, anyone else? Yeah, I think I'll do some projects. Jeremy, you're muted. Project. Something not to do with the chat, because that's all messed up. Well, oh, maybe. OK. I'll, 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 <laughs> if I have catch up, I'll catch up. You sure? Uh, yeah. I'll do what I can. Okay. I also think I, if you grab the right org, you're fine. I think I also grabbed the wrong org. That's why I don't have it. Yeah. And you can use um, one tip you could use for the future is for your trailhead uh, playgrounds, um, name it for something that's useful that's in it. So if you used it and, and it's got chat set up in it already, or it's got FSL in it or something, you can use the labeling. Well, let mm. me ask you. I, I don't want to take up time on the recording, but I have an org and I can see a historic chat that I did when I was working through it. But then when I tried to go to the visual force page, you know, because that's sort of like the shortest link to go to the other half of the chat. Mm, so, yeah. You know, I can't find that. And, and that's why I'm a little confused. Oh, OK. Apologies. No, no. So it's OK. Y'all, you guys continue and I'll catch up. OK. All right. So um, let's do the, um, the, bot, the Build an Einstein bot project and see how far we get in the mm. next hour. And I haven't done this one, so I can do it with you. So yeah. prep for Einstein bots. So we get to build a chat bot. Woohoo. If you've done the Einstein bots basics, you've learned all about the chat bots, benefits, terminology, and how to begin the bot planning process. Here you can get hands on in a trailhead playground, blah, 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 blah. So we've got Juan Garcia, who's an experienced customer service agent, been around long enough to, to know that most customers tend to ask the same question. They usually want to know their order status or username and password. Juan is a great problem solver and wants to put his skills to use by adding value in other ways. For example, he created a quick action to help sales reps close opportunities. And he built a macro to help support agents update case statuses and send notification emails to customers. Juan has already has even been thinking about marketing his reporting skills to help us and make critical business decisions. He knows it's unrealistic, but he wishes he could hire a robot to tackle the repetitive and tedious tasks. Then he could keep customers happy by spending more time with those who need it. 
Uh, at the same time, one of Juan's most loyal customers is beginning to use conf lose confidence with Ursa Major Solar. Whenever she needs help with a simple question, it takes a long time to connect with a real-time agent. If only there were a way to get her simple questions answered at robotic speed, then she wouldn't have to she wouldn't hesitate to recommend Ursa Major Solar to others. They're both in luck. As a new Salesforce admin at Ursa Major Solar, you've heard that a robot like this does exist. It's called Einstein Bots. Want to build one? Before you can have some fun with Einstein bots, you need to complete a few tasks first. Right, create a new trailhead playground. <laughs> you can find it at the bottom of this page. Right, let's do that then. Will it let me create a trailhead playground? Okay, that's happening. And while that's happening, what have we got to do? We've got to have some fun by publishing a Salesforce community. Now, this was, I was planning this for next week, but we get to have a sneak peek today. So we're gonna go into, as soon as we've got our, um, as soon as we've got our new Trailhead Playground. <laughs> Sorry. When you're ready to set up bots, you need a service card license, chat license, lightning experience. Okay. So let's turn on communities so that, but well, we can't do that till we have our org. So let's scroll down, make sure. Still working. Just get some more water while that's happening. Excuse me. Okay, unfortunately, it does take a few minutes. Okay, my Trailhead Playground 5. Launch. Curious Unicorn. I'm a curious unicorn this time, which is thrilling. Right. So first thing to do is to zoom in a bit so that you can see. And what we're going to do is go into our, once you've got it all set up, we are going to go to setup, Salesforce setup, sorry, and go to service setup. Right. Oh no, I've, I'm sorry, I've gone down to the wrong section. Apologies. So from setup, we're gonna go and enter community settings in the quick find box. There's community settings. And we're gonna click enable communities. Now what you're gonna have to do here is give in a little um, domain name here. Um, so you you can just you can't change your domain name after you've enabled your community. So uh, companies usually use their company name as the domain. Um, I'm just going to call this gem gem dash chatbot and check availability and quick save. Okay, does everyone know what we did there? We created a unique URL hosted by Salesforce, but relevant only to your org, which is why it asks you to put in a name and it checks for availability. So if you're going to create a community for a company and attach it to their website, you might have the, you know, the website domain as being the domain that goes with your community. Now, what is a community? It's a portal. It's a way of extending, creating a customer area um, inside that sits that people can get to from your website, but sits um, and interacts with Salesforce data, basically. So it's like, it's almost like the shop front, if you like. Um, so now that we've uh, enabled the community, what we have to do is create a new community here. So we go to new community. 
And we're going to use a template to do this. It's called the customer service template. There are several templates that you can use when you create a community, but the idea of this is that it's a drag and drop way to really replicate your and extend your website into a customer's um, into a customer service area. So we're going to select the customer service template here. We're going to click get started, and we're going to call our community Ursa Major Solar. Um, and then click create. Now we have a community. It might not be completely configured the, the way we want it, but we have a very basic community. So once that's finished creating, the next thing we have to do is set up live web chat. Okay, so this is the community workspace here where you can um, moderate, manage your uh, community build building. Um, you can put gamification in. You can um, set up single sign-on, loads of different things in communities. Anyway, now that we have that, what we have to do here is in the top left, we're going to click on the builder, which is the experience builder. And we're going to click select Salesforce. What we're going to click, sorry, it says, um, oh, excuse me, select Salesforce setup. Oh, here we go. I was in the wrong place. So this is the build, this is like the page where you can build your own community. So in the top left hand corner, you've got this little box up in the corner. You click that and go to Salesforce setup, and it takes you, it's a, it takes you straight into Salesforce backstage from the community workspace. Okay, so copy the URL associated with the community. So we're gonna go, let me come back out of this. That view Ursa Major Solar. Yes, I know. Let me just check. Salesforce set up, should return to the all communities page. Copy the URL associated with the Ursa Major Solar community. Right, okay. So this URL here, we need to make a copy of it. So right click, copy link address. And then we go to service setup. So up at the top here, click service setup. We're going to click view all under recommended setup because we're going to follow a guided process for the chat with customers, which is what we did a minute ago on the previous module. So then we click start and we're going to create a queue for FAQs. And the agent group is going to be called the Ursa Major Solar Chat Agents. Okay. And what we're doing here is we're just saying these are the people, this, this queue, the people who are added to this queue are able to pick up chats from this uh, chat bot. So I'm going to add myself. Um, and then um, you can also determine people's um, workload as well. So you can say, OK, these are the number of how many how many chats can people handle at once, which we looked at previously when we set up a chat bot, uh, a chat live agent there. Um, then you put your you've got your website URL. So you're going to use the URL from your um, from your community. So just as a reminder, you go to your all communities right click this and paste it into here okay so what that's doing is just saying um you know where when people come to your website and they want to chat this is the url that, that they go to which is your chat bot okay next then it says what's your type so um we're going to be dealing with service and this is where you can kind of say, okay, what kind of service, what kind of thing are you using chat for? Are you using it for sales, in which case you could, learn, uh, you, you could link it with leads. Are you using it for service, in which case it could be contacts and cases. Or if you're doing something else, you could just link it up to contacts and bring in whatever custom objects or packages you need. Then you have to say what happens if your um, people are busy. Um, you've got the chance to create a support form to let visitors log a case, so which is basically your web to case. Um, 
and and which is kind of your offline support um or you can just leave it off and no one no one does and no one there's nobody there for them basically <laughs> they're all alone um so we're going to click we're going to keep offline support off for this instance and we're going to click next now it's finishing up it's setting up the chat for us and um it says in trailhead we do not need to copy and paste this chat code snippet okay um our trailhead playground already has the embedded service chat code to power chats with customers but if you were doing this in real life you would want to copy it from the clipboard and put it somewhere safe okay pardon me now it says that we're we're, we're ready to chat so what what do we have to do we have to uh hit we'll hit done but you can you can move on to other tasks like uh, learning more about what you just set up, giving it a new look, using colors and fonts and things like that, um, or running it again and creating a second chat queue, etc. But we're just going to leave that for now and leave it as done. Now in setup, we are going to look for chat settings. We're going to take the this URL. This is an endpoint. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with that terminology, an endpoint is a, is a, is a URL, it's a unique URL uh, for an address on the internet where people can, where your chat, your chat bot on your website can send uh, messages to each other. Um, it's, a, it's a way of integrating systems together. So now that we, so now that we've got our URL, copy your endpoint here. So command uh, copy or control copy, control C. Then we're gonna go back to our community. In fact, I've got it open here, haven't I? So when we're looking at all communities, we're gonna click Builder next to our Ursa Major Solar community. And what we're gonna do next is actually enable our community to support our chat bot. Um, so in here, there's a couple of switches and things that we've got to throw in order to enable that to happen. So we've got to go to our settings in Community Builder, and we've got to click Security. And we've got to change the default content security policy from strict to allow inline settings. So this script security level is currently strict CSP, block inline scripts. We've got to actually allow the inline scripts to happen, otherwise the chatbot's not going to work. So we hit allow, and now it says that we have to add some trusted sites. So we are going to have to, um, um, what this does is it just basically says um, anything that's coming from this trusted site is permissible in our um, community, basically. So we're going to go in and add a trusted site, and we're going to call our trusted site Live Agent not love agent or loive agent. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, so for the URL, we put in the URL that we copied before, which is the endpoint. We can make sure active is ticked and we add the site. And now we've said it's okay for the community to interact with stuff that comes through that website. Okay. Now that we've secured it, the next thing we have to do is go and add embedded service chat to our website. So from setup, we go to all communities, we select all communities and we go to builder, which we're already in. And we're gonna click the components icon, which is a lightning um, symbol up here in the top left-hand corner. We're gonna click components and all the standard components that you can drag and drop into a community. So like if you wanted to put a language selector into your web, into your community, if you wanted to uh, put in tabs or a tile menu or a visual force page or recognition badges and things like that, you can build and drag and drop whatever you want around this page. If you're a WordPress user, you'll love this. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're gonna drag the embedded service chat over. So I'm gonna search for that. Embedded service chat is under support. We're gonna drag this in into the footer, so into here. Okay, and you notice there's loads of stuff here that we've got to fill in. Um, let's have a look and see what we need to do. Choose in the drop-down menu and click launch. Right, okay, interesting. 
do I have to save? Drag it to the bottom, to the template footer, scroll down the web page to see the template footer at the bottom of the page. Yeah, I've done that. Uh, placing it in the template footer allows it to appear on all pages. Okay, great. So then what do I do? I just hit here. Okay, I just do it, leave it. Fine. Copyright, rights file that Einstein used with permission, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I think that's all we have to do. I'm going to click. I'm not publishing. I think it just automatically saves it. So I'm going to verify the step now and we'll see if it actually likes it. That's very cool because look, bottom right hand corner just says agent offline. Okay, and that's worked. I've got my 100 points. Fantastic. Everyone else all right? Let me check the chat. Creative no. Yeah, everyone all right? I quite like this. This is good. Right then, so now that we've got our community set up and it can handle chat, we've now got to set up the bot itself. So we are going to go in. So we're still in... Um, in communities we're gonna but we're gonna pop back into salesforce setup now and from setup we're gonna just type in einstein bot and in the settings area we make sure it's switched on like we did earlier okay that's done. And then we're going to create, it's just setting it up now. Then we're going to go ahead and for our bot, uh, bot options menu, we're going to tick it like we did before. So we just hit edit, click enable Einstein bots options menu, click save. And then we're going to create a new bot. So we've got the bot name, the greeting, and the main menu options. So I can't be so uh, flippant this time. Are we going to have, because it's going to test you. Our Einstein bot is called Jana. And enter this description, a basic customer service bot. Okay. Cool. Then click next. And then the greetings mes message is... Hi, exclamation mark. I'm Jana, a customer service chatbot. How can I help you? Question mark. Okay, next. The next thing it wants us to do is to um, set a menu for common issues and questions that you want the bot to handle so we can do order related in menu item two for any questions related oh in menu item one so order related in menu item one and then appointment related in menu item two so that's creating your buttons in the chat box um and there's a good tip from Trailhead. It says provide menu options that tell customers exactly what questions the bot actually supports um, and give them a transfer to agent option so they can easily connect with a human if they don't see their particular inquiry type or if they're just not comfortable you know, working with the bot. So create, click create to build your bot. Nice. And then click finish. Good work. Your bot now has a name, a greeting, and a menu. And now that we've built it, we're going to go and check out the Einstein bot overview page, the builder page. So this will give you the bot's name, the description, a place to train it, to recognize what customers want, and to settings that will allow you to customize the response delay time. So let's have a minute and have a look at the page. So we've got overview. And of course, this page, this screenshot is completely out of date. Um, we have our bot information, um, which tells us uh, which tells us about the uh, any di any dialogue intents that we have are going into this section. We've got um, our chat messages. We we can add actions, rules, questions, etc., and we can do next steps as well. Um, confused. Okay. 
Um, so to store chat transcripts, you can use um, you can use conversation logging. So let me just let me just double check. Uh, click the pencil icon next to log conversations. Well, it's a different page, a different screen. It's a, sorry, everyone. It's a completely different screenshot in the Trailhead badge to what's in here now. So apologies. Um, so to share chat transcripts, click the pencil log next to log conversations. Um, am I even in the right place? Overview. Ah, no. Okay, sorry. User error. I take it all back. It was me. <laughs> so we can log. We can use uh, conversation data to store transcripts. So we can uh, toggle that on and on, on and off. We can cho choose the amount of. Um, what we can simulate typing by looking at how, you know, looking at delaying responses um, to give you a more authentic, something that feels more human in terms of the experience. In this project, we're going to be working with dialogues, entities, and variables. And these are all up here in your menu here. So we're going to go and select dialogues and we're going to build a, our first dialogue together. Now, let me just remember. Uh, the dialogues themselves are conversation snippets that control what the bot can do. Um, so we're going to click welcome on the left hand side and there's a load of pre-built dialogues um, here. So welcome is like the home dialogue um, and you've got uh, which will tell you you know where the bot always starts. We don't work with confused in this project. We just know that it's a fallback mechanism for when a customer can't identify what a customer would like to do. A bot can't identify what they want to do. So this is like you're catching. So if the bot figures out it's order related, then you know this dialogue here is where we can put in different intents um, and entities. And the same for um, the, the other appointment related, transfer to agent, et cetera. So, um, but it will always start with what's shown in the welcome. Um, you see the bot wizard set up our welcome message. Uh, yep, here it is. And created the next step flow already for us, which is at the bottom here. Uh, this is just where we say what we want to do next after the dialogue has been completed. We can set it to show a menu. We can have it start another dialogue. We can have it transfer to an agent. We can have it wait for customer input. Um, at the moment, after the welcome dialogue, it immediately goes to the main menu, which is, yeah. OK, so you're almost creating like, you know, a, a routing system in here. So. If you click the plus sign between message and next step, you can see that there are dialogues here that you can build from messages, questions, actions, and rules. Um, messages communicate information to a customer using text. Questions ask for customer input and store that information and most likely in your variables. Um, quest, uh, actions, they call Apex code. So if you've got to go and get, if let's say you, you need to, um, you know, because the, they say, I want to update my name and address, and you give them the chance to um, message their name and address, upload um, proof of change of name, uh, you could actually have some Apex code that then goes off and updates the right contact uh, from the chatbot. Um, then you can have rules. So you can have runtime decisions being made based on customer data. So you could say if, you know, if this is uh, an ex for example, is this a mental health query or is this, for, for example, a medical insurer um, and someone was chatting to say, I need to talk to the oncology team, for example, you could set up a rule that says if they say they want to talk to the oncology team, just send it straight there, for example. Um, so it's a good way. It acts like a concierge or a switchboard for chats, if you like, an automated switchboard. Um, so then we hit verify step because this project won't um, check any of our setup. So we just go into the next step. But it's been worth looking at that for certain. This is the first time I've looked into this in detail. It's great. Right. So we're going to go and add some pre-built dialogues now, um, which should help us get our head around how this can can be set up and and everything so so we're going to go and update our main menu we're going to add end chat and transfer to agent uh to our main menu so we're going to go and click this main menu dialogue and 
make sure that you've got show a menu enabled. Yes. Okay. So when they have finished this, when they've um, been through this particular set of rules, then the final thing to do is to show them a menu where they can say it's order related, etc. So click in the select menu items search field. Uh, select menu items search field. Yep. We're going to select transfer to an agent. And then we click in there again and we find end chat. So this is the menu that the bot will show your customer economy. We're going to click save. Then we're going to go and configure our chat button to preview the bot. So we go in the top left hand corner of the bot builder. We're going to go to overview and we're going to add another channel. So we click add. And we're going to select chat as the channel. And the deployment that we're going to use is the Ursa Major Solar Chat Agent Deployment. And we're going to leave this box un unticked at the moment. We don't need to, them to be online in order to be used for this chatbot. OK. So we've now mapped, what we've just done there is we have now mapped our bot to our chat button itself. Um, so we, now we can go and preview. So if we go to the over from the overview, we go to dialogues, we click activate, and we click preview. Now, in order to preview, we have to say which embedded service channel we're going to use. So we're going to use our chat agents and click submit. Now let's see what this does. Right. So our agent is offline at the moment. Um, it says try again and wait. It could take a minute. Okay, fine. And then eventually, <laughs> hopefully, it should say chat with an expert. It's dialogue page, click activate, click preview. Next to the chat agents, click submit. Try again and wait. Could take a minute. Click chat with an expert to preview the bot. Alternatively, you can preview the bot from the chat widget in your community. So from setup, you go into um, all communities, select builder next to your community, and then click preview in experience builder. Right here. Agent offline. It still says agent offline, doesn't it? Chat with an expert. There we go. So chat with an expert, bottom right hand corner. You say, what's your name? Your discount request was reproved. Da, 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 da. Start chatting. An agent is on the way. Woohoo. I'm Jonah, the customer service chatbot. How can I help you? Order related, appointment related, transfer to agent or end chat. Guys, we've just built that. That's so cool. So then click start chatting. You'll be greeted by the bot that gives the, the menu. Fantastic. Then it says, notice that you should have three dots in the lower left. Well, it's not. It's three lines now. It's a burger menu. And you've got um, transfer to agent is the only option there. So we need to add the main menu so that customers can easily return back to this menu option. So we've got to go and click deactivate on our bot. So I've flicked back over into my other screen where I've got the bot builder. Um, we click yes to agree to deactivate it. And then basically, you know, in experience builder, it will say that the agent's offline. And chat, close chat. There we go. So refresh page, it should say I'm offline. There we go. Or not. <laughs> anyway, we'll give it another go, shall we? Okay. Oh, there we go. it worked. Um, so deactivate. Click the drop down menu next to transfer to agent dialog and click edit. Okay. Um, and then what we've got to do is click sh show in bot options menu, which gives customers a quick way to leave the dialog during the chat and click save. Okay, so let's test it. We'll activate it again. Click submit again. We can chat with an expert. 
And it says, fill in every field in the pre-chat form and start chatting. Okay, Gemma. Uh, hello. Agent is on the way. And now if we look in the menu, so here is your, your main menu that we set up, but look, it still just says transfer to agent though, doesn't it? Okay, maybe I need to refresh the whole page. Preview. Hmm. That's interesting. It doesn't say main menu. So activate the bot, click chat with an expert, click that. You should now see transfer to agent and main menu. Right. Anyway, okay. Um, did you see that it, okay, if not, click the one new message link. This is useful for customers in a very long chat who want a quick way to get back to the menu. Chat with an expert. Start chatting. No, no main menu. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't check any of our setup now, so we can move on to the next stage. I don't know about you guys, I'm really learning from this one. This is an interesting one. So yeah, I'm only getting transfer to agent and not main menu as well. It's really weird. Right, so then what we've got to do is create a dialogue, a sub menu and a dialogue group. So I actually want to come out of that. <clears throat> Just to give everything a chance to you know, reload. Okay, so that's Yana version one. So on the dialogues page, now that you're back in your bot, you go into your dialogues page and you're going to click new to create a new dialogue. Uh, do we have to deactivate this first? Yes, we do. So obviously, you can't make a change to a dialogue that is um, active. You're going to have to de um, deactivate it first. So hit search, go to new dialogue. And we're going to call this search FAQ. Okay, leave the description blank. And then the assign to dialogue group setting. This lets admins group dialogue, similar dialogues together in the bot builder for easy navigation. So for now, we're going to leave it as none. And then we're going to tick the show in bot options menu box. We're going to click save. And then we're going to go to our main menu. And we're going to, in the next step section, make sure that show a menu is ticked. And where is that? Yeah, show a menu. Yes. And we're going to click in select menu items. Where is it? And, and click search FAQ. Select menu items. Click in select menu items in the next step section, select menu items. There, this one. And we're going to click search FAQ and click it and make sure it comes up. And then to rearrange these items, you can kind of drag and drop them to the different positions. So I'm going to put order related, appointment related. I'm going to move search FAQ up to um, just beneath appointment related and then um, go from there. Click save. And your new menu should look like this. Okay. Then we're going to do a sub menu. So this is when a bot has got more than five to six menu options and you want to group them in different categories and, and offer different sub menus to add more options up. And this will help you to do it without taking up screen space and gives people a bit more of a cleaner experience. So um, if, for example, if customers are viewing menu options from their phones, they'll really appreciate that. So 
but I mean, as with anything with Salesforce, we always try and keep things as, as straightforward as possible and as simple to use as possible. It has to be intuitive, as intuitive as it can be. So, so far we've created empty dialogue placeholders. We're gonna add conversations in a bit, but for now let's add the new transaction dialogues. So we're gonna to go to the plus sign, click new dialogue. And we're gonna call it order status. Pardon me. We're going to leave the showing bot options menu unticked. And then we're going to do, we're going to repeat this process for cancel an order and return an order. So click new dialog, cancel an order. And return an order. Okay, so you notice we, we've got all of these have been added now uh, to our menus. Um, so we're going to add our new dialogues to our order related menu. So we're going to click the order related dialog and click show a menu from the next step section. So if we hit that, and in this next step section, we're going to go show a menu and then we're going to add our menu items. So the menu items that are order related are your order status cancelling the order and returning the order do you see what we're doing here we're just creating a different cat it's almost like um voice recognition on the phone where it's like press this option one for you know appointments press two for prescriptions press three for you know anything else admin and finance and stuff so so this is basically what we're doing here but with bots instead uh which is what your dialogues are so now what we need to do is we save and we activate and we're going to go and test again. So we go to preview and we hit submit. And it says chat with an expert. So we're going to fill in every bit on the form. And start chatting. Hello, hello, Yana. So we're going to go order related. And then it breaks down a little bit. So you see, you can do order status, cancel an order, return an order, and see what order status does. Does nothing because we haven't set that bit up. Okay, everyone with us and what we've done there? So the next thing we need to do is to create a dialogue group because all these dialogues relate to customer orders. So we need to keep them nice and tidy um, and make sure that we're comfortable with how uh, things are arranged. So for, to do that, we've got to deactivate our bot again. It's a bit easier to use than Flow, if I'm honest, because you know I'm having to create new versions all the time. Um, okay, so click yes, then click the plus sign and select new group. So up here is your plus sign. We're going to click new group, and this is going to be called customer orders. New group customer orders. Then what we need to do is we're gonna start dropping our dialogues in there. So uh, next to order related, click the drop down and click select edit. And then in the assigned dialogue group, this is where we say it belongs to the customer orders. And we're gonna tick show in bot options menu. So what we just did there is everything that is order related in that menu is grouped up nicely so that it's conceptually um, easy to easy to track and less confusing to work with. Okay, so next thing we do is just verify the step. They're not checking us this time. This is just um, we, we, it's done. It's an honesty. It's an honesty module. Okay, we're nearly there, but, um, ladies and gents, just going to get some water. Okay, 80% of the way through this project, so I'll have to give you some, some different homework. <laughs> 
I nearly said extra, right? And now we're going to do the fun stuff. We're going to write some bot conversations using variables and entities. So we've got to create an entity for the order number so that we can start um, enabling those conversations to happen between the customer and the bot. We created empty placeholders for order related dialogues and appointment related dialogues um, so that we could just list them from the main menu. We also did uh, a welcome message. We're now going to do a, we're going to do a question in a minute, which is where we configure the bot to ask a question and then store the answer in a variable that we can use later. But first, in order to do that, we've got to set up an entity. So this is the type of data you want to collect from a customer, like an order number or an email address. So next to dialogues, we're going to click the drop down arrow uh, message, uh, drop down menu, and we're going to go and get entities in the top left hand corner. And here is a list of all the entities. Um, so we are going to click new and the label that we're going to give this is order number string. That label tells us what the uh, data is going to be that you're capturing and also what type of data it is because it's string it means um, text. Now the extraction type is pattern. It doesn't explain why in the trailhead so I need to just check. Um, and then there's a regex pattern. Now, if any of you are familiar with JavaScript, regex is a way of um, actually, uh, and it's, a, it's another function you can use in validation rules as well to regulate what um, what an order number, um, pa uh, yeah, pattern should be. So for example, if an order number always starts with A, B, C, dash, one, two, three, four, five, dash, and then the, the next sequential number, you would use a regex uh, function to validate that it comes out in that format every time. So that's what regex pattern is all about. Now, there is uh, an expression here, which I'll put in the chat for you, um, that we have to use for this um, trailhead badge. Let me just go and put that in the chat for you. OK, so if you copy that, that's a regular expression. That's what regex means or regex means, and it allows you to, it basically says, enforces that um, the data that can be held in that um, entity has to be formatted if it has to be, has to start with the letter, Z, the letter O with a dash and five numbers in order for it to be stored in a variable. Okay, so we're just being really specific here about what type of data we can store in a variable for this chatbot. Appreciate it. there's a lot of um, nasty words here. <laughs> um, I'm learning with you, so because um, this is completely new to me. Um, add a question and create a variable. So a variable is a container, stores a specific piece of data collected from the customer. So we've got our order number in there, um, which is our variable. Um, we actually, sorry, no, we have to create. We have an entity, which is our order number. What we then have to do is actually create a variable that is linked to that entity so that customers can put that information in and Salesforce can temporarily store it. So next to entities, click the drop down and go to dialogues. Click on the order status dialog. And we're gonna select a question. And this is where we get to kind of define what's the entity name, what's the answer to the variable, what is the bot asking, et cetera. So in bot asks, we can enter what's the order number. And then there's a whole load of like other stuff that I can paste here from trailhead. Just to give the customer a bit more um, guidance of what kind of number to look for. Okay, then we've got to set our entity name. Our entity name is our order number string. Oh, great, and we can look it up as well. Then in the save answer to variable box, we're gonna click, we're gonna click in it and we're gonna create a new text variable. We're gonna call this order number. And it also, the smart thing is, is we can actually put um, a list. We can, some of these variables can, can hold multiple values as well. So we can um, set those up, but not for this instance. So we click save, pardon me. Um, and as you can see, we've now linked the answer to that. We, we've told 
We've told the bot what the question is. We've told it where we're going to keep the data, the answer. And we, um, sorry, we've, we've, we've defined an entity and then we've told, we've, um, we've actually said where we want the answer to the question to go. Um, we're then going to make sure, okay, different, yeah. So the next thing that we do to, to verify that we are capturing the customer's entry, we add a message so that the variable gets merged back to a message and we can verify the result. So underneath the question, we're going to click this little plus sign and we're going to select message. I would like, I, I would like to see a lot more context behind what I were doing this. In the bot says, the text we're going to put in is, sure, let me look up this order for you. And then you've got to put in the entity, sorry, the uh, the label. So, and actually what they've done here is actually type it in. So I'm going to, let me look up this order. So remember we talked about API names, the fields, and how they're referred to in code, how they've got the curly brackets and the exclamation marks. That's what we're doing here. It's a merge field. So we're just going to merge that order number into the text. Okay. So then we click save and we're going to test. So we activate our bot. We go to preview if it's not open already. Click submit. Click chat with an expert. Fill in every field. Start chatting. And then we're going to click that it's order related. And now we can say you've got uh, one new message that you can click, or you can go to, um, what does it say? Order status, type in zero dash one, two, three, four, five, and press enter. Uh, I didn't understand that. So, I think what was missing in the instructions, or rather I didn't read properly, uh, click order status. What's the order number? No, it normally starts with a letter zero and then a dash one, two, three, four, five. And then it comes up with, sure, let me look up this order for you. How cool is this, huh? And that's all because we just put this in. So we can add in loads of different other things in here. So congratulations, we just had a conversation with a bot. Uh, more importantly, we just built a bot that can engage with customers. So we can now show, as admins, we can show them how to set up Einstein bots. But just going through this once has been useful. It's been useful in terms of, you know, for me and for me creating pictures in my head of how these things all fit together. But actually, when it came to if it if it was coming, if I was having to set this up for a customer, I, I think I would have to sit with the customer. Um, while they actually help me with the text and so on. So, so I can see that there'd be quite a lot of work involved in setting this up and a lot of ways that it could go wrong. I mean, does, that, does anyone else have an opinion on that? I, um, <clears throat> there's another company that does chatbots called Drift and they actually do a course in conversational marketing Excuse and like how me. you build stuff up like this because it's, I mean, how else are you meant to learn how to do this? It's a whole thing, right? Yeah. It's, this is a project in itself, I think. I don't know. I think uh, it also is very helpful. I spent a lot of years training support reps, and each product and each company has its own um, sort of conversational style, and I think that uh, being able to fit that would be very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I like it in terms of setting it up. It looks fairly straightforward. It's just uh, most of the legwork is in is in the meetings, like with most stuff in Salesforce, I guess. Okay, well that actually concludes. Um, so if you want to have a go and uh, verify your step, you should all have confetti and a new badge. Um, in which case, that will conclude uh, the session for today. Um, does anyone have any questions or want to um, discuss anything else before we stop?
No, it was fun. I did enjoy this. So yeah, by all means, have a go and, and try and do some. Maybe we can um, have a have a chatbot competition. Who can do like the most sarcastic chatbot? I think that would be fun. I think that'd be loads of fun. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for your patience and for attending and for taking part. Um, it was quite a hefty one, but still a lot of fun. Uh, take care. And I will um, see you next week for more communities.